year down the line after COVID uh, started. Um, and at a time when the economy is on a start and stop kind of, uh, you know, um, you know, shutting up and opening. Uh, of course, the snippet we have is through the finance bill, which is already tabled in Parliament. It's very clear the government's intention to increase and introduce new taxes, including on very essential uh, goods and services, uh, things like brand, um, pharmaceuticals. Uh, we think it's, it's the wrong thing to do uh, at such a time. Uh, you will recall last year government uh, introduced minimum tax, which has been suspended by the High Court for the time being. And uh, obviously it has an impact to cripple both small and big businesses uh, if uh, not really looked at. And um, our expectation is that government should now be concentrating actually um, in vac vaccinating the citizens uh, with a view to get as uh, much uh, people vaccinated as possible. Um, that's the only way that uh, we will be able to reopen our economy in a sustainable manner. Now, looking at the estimates that have been tabled in Parliament, it's very clear the government is focused more on infrastructure projects, perhaps uh, you know, to secure the legacy, which is the final leg of the current administration. And therefore, uh, it looks like the government is still keen to implement uh, big infrastructural projects. The only uh, problem we see with that is that government will not be able to raise enough finances through the taxes and therefore they will continue to borrow, uh, which is going to put a lot of pressure on the economy, uh, you know, um, as it is. So our view would have been to see more of a stimulus package uh, for purposes of uh, assisting uh, uh, businesses uh, to recover, uh, for them to create employment. So this is what really we would have expected to see, but uh, it seems um, the government is keen to continue rolling out big infrastructural projects. Uh, very little resources have been set aside for health um, at this time of the pandemic. We would have expected to see a lot more resources actually diverted from these projects for purposes of securing the health of Kenyans at this time of the pandemic. Th this is not exactly what we have seen from the estimates tabled in Parliament and from what is intended in the Finance Bill 2021. Um, the other thing, obviously, is that we are coming to an election next year. Um, it's, uh, uh, you know, the elections uh, typically in August. So um, that process also takes a lot of resources, a lot of money. And therefore, um, I, I think there is need to plan well in advance uh, in order to uh, not to put the country in, in, in a mode where we will not be able to finance those very important processes. Uh, for example, brand has been zero rated. Uh, previous years it was exempt. It is better than standard rating. When you standard rate, it means that brand will now be subject to VAT at 16%. And obviously that 16% goes straight to the consumer. So it's 16% more to pay for the brand. So that's one of the things. The other one is uh, a couple of things, including silages for use in hospitals, a few medicaments where originally these things were exempt and there is now a proposal to make them standard rated. Uh, that means they will cost 16% more. So um, ideally those are very basic things for every Kenyan, uh, it's, it's essential. And of course um, widening the tax bracket uh, by introducing digital taxes, minimum tax, was, was, was well intended initially. Uh, but the application of the same generally to everyone doesn't make sense. Now, there is the issue of export and services, um, where we have youngsters now investing in technology and obviously looking to export those services. By making them exempt, it means that they are slightly more expensive than if uh, zero rated. So again, uh, government seems to be targeting that as well. Uh, it's not going to hog very well, especially uh, where government is uh, intending to roll out is a uh, lot of money set aside for the Konza city. It was meant to be a techno city for services, and those services are not to be consumed in Kenya only. They are to be exported all over the world. So, yeah, um, it seems to me that uh, the tax uh, proposals by government are purely to enhance tax collection. Uh, it's ignoring the fact that it has a bigger impact 
uh, on the businesses and the economy the war of uh, East Africa. Uh, those economies have been battered uh, by the pandemic, just like the Kenyan economy has. Uh, but um, due to what President Magufuli did, the late President Magufuli did in Tanzania, the economy has actually really improved over the last four or five years. They've done very well. We hope, um, in my view, I think that um, it's an economy to watch. Uh, they seem to have done things right. They seem to have even uh, rolled out uh, big infrastructural projects and completed ahead of Kenya uh, in some of the space. So uh, it's an economy to watch, and I think uh, it will be you know, very interesting to see um, what results they have when, when on the budget day. Uh, the other economies are really small economies. Rwanda is a typically very small economy, but doing very well on the financial front, uh, the banking sector, and uh, you know, the attempt by Rwanda to become the financial hub in East Africa is something that they have been very consistent and uh, it seems to be bearing fruit. Um, Uganda economy, um, highly dependent on Kenya as well, um, uh, but then um, not really uh, anything exciting to say. However, you know that Uganda is now at a stage where they are, you know, in the laying the infrastructure for um, exportation of their oil. So in time to come, I think that will be very exciting to see um, how the oil uh, is going to change the economy in Uganda.